Hello, everyone. The day is Thursday, January 7, 2021. Thank God. <laughs> this is the week in charts. Sure, obviously, I want to thank all you guys and girls for taking time out of your schedule to be here tonight. I know it's a bit of a mystery how to find the live shows, but I promise to do better on that. If you've seen watching this on YouTube, I want to thank you. Please like it if you like it. If you don't like it, go have no fun somewhere else. Oh, yeah, I'm kidding. And then also, if you can't find a show, check my homepage, usually on the Thursdays, usually on Thursdays, because most of the shows on Thursdays nights. Ignore those two things. It's obviously a bull leg. This slide was from a year ago. So what are we going to talk about? Well, my ongoing quest is something that I've been working on for many years, and and I think I've done quite well with it recently. I might have went a little overboard trying to do this last year, but I kind of went off the rails a little bit or the wheels came off the bus, however you want to look at it. But as long as I'm sticking to my core methodology and just taking the can't stand it type of trades, the F yeah trades for day trades and e minis, I'm doing pretty good. But anyway, before I get into that, when I was going to do this presentation, I was going to talk about the 21 trading resolutions for 2021. And I'm still going to do that. And what I did earlier today was I looked to see if I had any old slides from last year and I found them. And when I started working on them, I noticed that the beginning of the slides was my ongoing quest. And given the market conditions, I think it's, imp I think it's important for me to focus on that tonight and we'll get to those resolutions next week. Now, before we do all that, there's a disclaimer screen. As you know, you can lose money trading or as I like to sum it up, all predictions about the future. A lot of stuff can happen between now and then. I borrowed that from my buddy. Greg Morris. Now, I kind of know, I realize I kind of had a long lead in here, but basically my goal is, and what we often accomplish with the core methodology, is to have the short-term trading pay for the longer-term trading. And this is something that I've talked about on and off for the last few years, and it's something that I've, I've done for as long as I can remember, for 20 years. And I, I feel like I'm getting a little better with it. I do occasionally lose a little discipline. I also have this thing called an ego. When I start printing money, I just have to remind myself that I'm not God. <laughs> and those people who claim to be God looks like they're in a lot of trouble, but I might digress if we start talking about that. We can talk about that. Well, we better not. Anyway, I was, as I've said, ad nauseum because I'm so proud of it, but it was it was a wonderful experience and, and we need to get together as the Dave Landry trend traders, we need to get the Facebook group together and, and do a retreat at some point in time. Maybe this virus blows over or we all get the vaccine or whatever. We can go away someplace really nice and, and have a trader's retreat because this was a, one of the most exciting things I've done in the last few years. And it just was a blast. And it was so much fun to be with a bunch of traders. And we were trading live while we were there. It was just a lot of fun. But anyway, Charlie Kirk was kind enough to invite me to be the guest of honor. And when I was showing my money management to everyone, he says, I like that. And he dubbed it free rolling. And basically what that means is you are getting a swing trade profit out of the trade. And then you're holding on to a piece for a longer term trade. Now, like Pinocchio being a bad motivational speaker, I thought everybody knew that. And as I've said several times, I was on a project a few years back. And it was a newsletter. The newsletter was, I think, $40,000 a copy. It was an institutional newsletter. And the people that were on the team read like a who's who of the financial industry. It's kind of a pinch me moment. That's it's kind of like the Charlie Kirk retreat was kind of a pinch me moment. It was so much fun. It was, it was surreal. Being on this team was the same sort of thing. It was just amazing. And, and the people on the team, you know, Greg Morris, Larry McMillan, and, you know, I better stop naming them because we're going to forget half of who was on the team. But anyway, one of the guys, his name is Jan, pointed out that, and he's a brainiac. And at the time, he was running a Forex fund, a quant fund type of fund. And he was keeping the stats on everybody and, and keeping everybody in line, keeping everybody, everybody in check. And he pointed out in one meeting that, he goes, I like what Dave's doing. He's taking these swing trade profits and then hanging on to a piece. And he's doing really, really well. And I think... Another one, speaking of pinch me moments, probably the biggest pinch me moment of my life was a few months later, we were at a, a dinner for the American Association of Professional Technical Analysts. 
And I saw Larry McMillan at the table and I walked up and said, I'm Dave Landry. And he goes, I know who you are. He goes, you were on fire when you were on that project. And I'm like, oh my God, he knows who I am. <laughs> it's funny, as I said before, I, I could give a flip. I see a celebrity at an airport, I'm like, yeah, whatever. But you know, when I see somebody like Greg Morris or Larry McMillan, I get all excited or Linda Rasky or whatever. But it's kind of cool that um, through the organizations, they able to meet these people. But anyway, it was very exciting for me that not everybody knows this little simple money management trick and it can really pay off nicely. So let's talk a little bit about the free rolling. So this is the open model portfolio and somebody was in, I think they're gonna probably talk about in the Facebook group, but they were kind of deeming the, the model portfolio not as needed as much lately because the Landry list has just been printing money. And it doesn't always do that. We had one on the list today that was up 40 something percent. And that's just ludicrous. Even ludicrous will say that's ludicrous. But anyway, the goal here longer term is to get into these positions and hold on as long as possible. The real money's in longer term trend following and kind of in a nutshell, let me just kind of give you a little thumbnail of that or a nutshell, mix some metaphors here. But if you're just gonna go in and trade for the long term, your stops are gonna to have to be so wide, it's gonna be crazy. And if you're trying to get money management in line, you're not gonna get off enough shares. Your accuracy is gonna be about 27%, if that much. And you're also gonna have abysmal drawdowns. This is why you have you know, people like the Turtles who do incredibly well or did incredibly well, and most of them are no longer running money. Now, I don't know that for a fact, but I know quite a few of them aren't. I think one's in jail, one or two are in jail. <laughs> But that's another story. Anyway, and that's because the drawdowns can be abysmal. So my way of trying to solve for that is to take a swing trade profit and to hold on to a piece, half of the position. And you know, half is plenty if the market really moves in your favor. So if we take a look at the open portfolio and we take a look at these numbers, you can see that everything in white, we've taken a swing trade profit off. And then everything in yellow, We've actually, and I need to check that price. Let me check that price real quick. Is that really doing that well? Let's see. Yeah, CP 14. Ah, I might have been, there might be a mistake in here. Maybe that's why it's looking so good. <laughs> I need to double check on this. Let's see. That looks like, that looks too big. 712. Is that correct? CPE? Let me check that out here. CPE. Yeah, that's right. Huh? CPE 1428. Wow. Okay. I didn't even realize it was that big myself. I wasn't paying attention. Yeah, I think that's right. Anyway, I need to, I'll, I'll, I'll confirm that tomorrow, but even I'm impressed with me. <laughs> so, but you can see that the real money is in the second loaf, in the second part of the trade. John says, okay, enough. I passed on CPE. Oh, sorry about that, John. Yeah, I didn't realize that number was, was that big. It just doesn't seem right. I hadn't been paying attention to that. And in my case, I bought, a, I ended up with, I started out in the trade and I traded out of it and I traded in the options and then the options got executed. And I think my options were executed at 14, but I had options like at eight and nine and 10 and I just kept rolling and rolling them. And that's why I wasn't real. I didn't realize that it was that much in open profits. And I feel like I still need to confirm that, but I'll, I'll do that tomorrow. So anyway, and I'll check my trades against that too. But you can see the real money is in the second loaf. We're looking to make 1%, and this is a hypothetical $100,000 account, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in one second. And so 1% would be roughly a thousand bucks. And sometimes, you know, the entry, you get a little skittage on, and sometimes it, by the time you get the profits out and all, it's a little bit less than a thousand, but that's not what a real money is. And it's okay to take profits a little early. And if we have time, we get to the live charts, we can maybe talk about that. So CPE is 1447. And we got in at, that's right, we got in at, we got in at 712. Wow. So that's 105% move so far, knock on wood. So you can see the real money's in that second loaf. And again, you take a look at ALGM. And ALGM's been kind of a sleepy little stock. It's what I call a box stock or turn into a box stock once we got into it. It went up and made a little box and then went up and made another little box just rinse and repeat, kind of like Chewy did forever. But you can see it's not set the world on fire in the second loaf, but we have an okay profit there. And then I missed one in here, ASO is another one. This is Academy Sports and so far, we're doing okay on that one of about 24%. The GNLN actually hit the profit target today, but then came back in, unfortunately. 
But hey, we get stopped out. We get stopped out better than the poke in the eye. And there are a few losers in here, as you can see. It happens. Double to silent SH. And then CLB is one of our newer trades. And maybe that's what I'm getting confused with this CPE. I didn't think that we're up $5,000 already in, in CLB. But anyway, this one already banged out the initial profit target. And then we have open profits of $1,000. So you can see the open profits... Roughly, let's say 5,000, 6,000, 7,000, 8,000, 9,000, 10,000, you know, roughly $11,000, just kind of eyeball it at open profits. And you can see that this number is $16,000 on the open portfolio. So, again, you want to be able, you want to get into the position, get that swing trade out, get that stop up to break even, and then let that stop gradually loosen over time. And, and I know everybody here tonight knows these things, but sometimes it doesn't hurt to hear them again. And like I said a second ago, it took me forever to get the story out, but not everybody knows this. Now, when I was looking at my slides from last year, I talked about how much margin was being used in the model portfolio on the $100,000. Now, just real quickly, as far as margin is concerned, just tread lightly with margin. And I use, mar I use a lot of margin, at least lately I've been using quite a bit of margin just because so many I have so many positions on. But... It's an ebb and flow. So I'm taking positions off and coming off a margin and then putting positions on and going back on the margin. So you got to be careful. But when I talk about margin here, I'm talking about what the requirement, the, the equity requirement would be. So first off, it's a hypothetical 100K account. And just to keep everything legal, everything's for educational purposes only, as you know. And just to make the math easy, what happens is on every trade, I base it on a hypothetical 100K account. Now, right now, if you, they, there were a few losers somewhere in between, but there were some winners too. So you would be much more than $100,000. And if you just took the open portfolio, you'd be at 116,000. But all new trades like this one down here with 0.85 risk, you'd buy 2,353 shares or round it up or down, however you want to do it, on a $100,000 account because if you get stopped out, you don't want to lose any more than 2% or $2,000. Now, again, hypothetical for educational purposes only, but I, but I do take these trades and I do run this model as close to this model as possible. But like I said a few minutes ago, in some cases, I had so much profits. Now I'm beginning to remember, slowly beginning to remember. I had so much profits at the CPE. Sorry about that, John Ross. <laughs> that I was rolling out into options. And so a lot of those profits have already been taken on that one. But anyway, I get a lot of questions on the margin management. So if you were to go back in time and to the original position, okay, that's how much margin it took you. So if you bought 500 shares of APG at 1228, which was the entry or the trigger, well, where we in, ended up in the stock, You'd have to put up 6140. Well, we buy the whole position and we split it into two lows, so to speak. So I could show the swing trade part and a trending part, kind of the kind of a teaching example and to kind of make it easy to see in the open portfolio. Now, what happens is if you obviously took all these trades, you'd have ninety-eight thousand dollars in open margin, but and I don't have the exit dates up here on the IPTs. And that's something that I may figure out a way to add to the spreadsheet in the future. But you would obviously, as you sell these shares and it hits the IPT, then you come off of that margin for that position. So you can see that the margin has come off and it's now down to 66,552. So if we take a look at the math on that, so right now you're 66.5% quote unquote, invested. Now, we don't want to lose $66,000, obviously, okay? We only want to lose, we don't lose anything, but at most, we only want to risk 2% of our account. So in any one position, a 2% loss. Now, I keep rolling the portfolio back to 100K every time we put on a new position, just for educational purposes, again, to keep the math easy. But in reality, you have more than 100K at this point in time, and sometimes it goes below that, obviously, if we have a string of losers. But if you base it on the fact that you have $116,000 of open and recently taken profits on the swing trade portion, then you're really now are only 
40% invested, so to speak, by the amount of margin required. So you would have 45% of your money available to invest in other stocks. And believe me, there's been so many lately. I wish I had a lot more than 45%. Now, I would encourage you to, if you want to get up to speed on this, to review the archives of the trading service. And it's daveletter.com slash archives. Now, if you're new to the trading service, take a look at the current ones down below or the recent ones down below. And that's going to give you a feel for the ebb and flow and how it works. Worse and all. And you can go in and look at those archives and go back many, many, many years and see the good, the bad, and the ugly. Okay. So what I thought I would do tonight, and this is one reason why I decided to hold off on the resolutions until next week, was to show you some positions that I have on that are in free rolling mode, so to speak. And these are all live positions as of earlier today. So EBC was one we did talk about in the Facebook group. And by the way, never say never, but I think all the ones tonight, and usually I have time to go in and, and double check, but I think everyone tonight we talked about before it triggered or as it triggered in the Facebook group. And then obviously everyone in the service that I just showed you was in the service for that particular day. And you can look at the archives and actually see the trades. So this was a bank. I wasn't too excited about buying a bank, but banks were doing really well. And we're going to take a look at banks in a few minutes. And they've been just on fire, trading like a biotech almost. But we had a buy at B pattern. Remember, the buy at B is the new closing high. If you squint your eyes, you might say, well, Dave, didn't it make a buy at B way back here? And I'm like, yeah, but the range wasn't that good, okay? And on this particular day, the range had begun to expand, and I figured it was worth a shot. Now, I exited 500 shares here, and if we do the math on that, it was $1.35 times 500. And by the way, this is an account that I have, one of my more active accounts, and I do most of the model trades, or I should say probably all of the model trades in this account. And then these other trades you're seeing are some ancillary things that I do within the account. So it's it's usually pretty close to the model account as far as position sizing. In other words, about 100K, at least at the time that I did this capture. So... I made $680 in the first loaf. That's a little light for that 1%, but the real money is in the second loaf. And this is kind of a sleepy bank, not a sleepy bank, but it was just taking a while to get gone in here. And for whatever reasons, I took profits maybe a little bit early, but not too early on that one. So continuing on, so there's a little swing trade profit. How many days in the trade? One, two, three, four, five, six seven days of the trade, took some partial profits. And now if you take a look at where it was earlier today, it was at 17. And so that's $4.06 times the 500 residual shares. We're in longer term trend following mode. Remember, and by the way, what we're doing is we're allowing that stop to widen out. Okay. And I'll show you a couple of live examples of that in just one minute. Let me take a look at that ALGM stop. So $2,000 open on the remainder, and I hate to use the word hope, but hopefully we're in this stock for a long, long time. Now, here's another one. This was a buy at B. This almost turned into, and John is here tonight, a Hotel California stock because the spread was pretty much abysmal. But you can see I was buying it down around 1624, 1625, and it was a buy at B type of setup. And I'll show you when it triggered. It triggered on this day here, and based on the volatility of the stock, all that was required was 400 shares. And then I was able to flip out 200 a few days ago, about a week ago. And it took a little while for that to happen, but it happened. Does it always happen? If it always happened, you never see my fat ass again, as you know. So we did the math on that. Sold at 2040, got in at 16 and a quarter, round numbers. That's a 450 times 200, which is $830. A little shy of that thousand bucks, but hey, I was pretty happy to get it based on the fact that this thing had like a point and a half spread at times. So I was a little, little nervous about that, a little bit of a Hotel California type IPO, or at least turned into that. That's one of the dangers of IPOs. And I want to make sure I tell you or emphasize there is risk in trading. And sometimes you get these IPOs and they get really thin after you get them. They look good going in, but sometimes they're hard to get out of. But so far, so good on that one. Again, not going to win implied. I have $500, $550 of open profits left on that. John says, rolling with you on BDSX, same entry. Cool. All right. Yeah. So we talked about this on the Facebook group. And John Ross is here tonight. 
coined the phrase Hotel California. And this, this stock has been a little bit of a Hotel California for us. But the good news is as a small private trader, you can go in and trade some of these thinner issues sometimes and they have better opportunities. But if more recent times, just FYI, you have to be a little flexible with the market. I found that you're a little bit better off because there's so many opportunities with going with a slightly more volume stocks, okay? Or stocks with slightly higher volume, okay? NGMS, another one I took, and I hope I talked about this on the Facebook group. If not, I should have. Got in at 23.53 and then sold some off at 30.54. This was a small position. I don't know why the position was so small at the time. Maybe I didn't want to have, maybe I was already margin 200%. <laughs> Or something but anyway as you can see bought 200 buy a d pattern new closing high and then this wouldn't fail miserably and i was pretty close to getting stopped out if you buy by the way an ipo at new closing high and it goes down to make new lows and you're wrong that's one thing great about the pattern not that you always want to allow it to go all the way down to new lows but depending on how far those lows are away i'll say okay well i might give it to those new lows and believe me on the 9th of december I was getting a little nervous in the last couple of days, a couple of days after that too. But fortunately, it did rally up. And if we do the math on that, 30.54 minus 23.53 comes to seven dollars, seven dollars and one cents, and only 100 shares. But still, that's 700 dollars. It's better than the poke in the eye, especially if you annualize that. I know you shouldn't do that, but. So John, you went beyond NGMS MS too. That's good. Well, now you feel better about the CP. <laughs> I'm sorry to mention it again. It's like that Beaky stock. You know, I couldn't stop mentioning it, which hopefully I learned a lesson from that. So anyway, on this one, I have $10 in open profits, $10 in change, depending on the second you look at the market. And that comes to, obviously, on 100 shares, that's $1,000 open. So it's better than the poke in the eye. And that's on... Uh, around 100k account so that's 1.7 percent over a fairly short period of time so there's nothing to nothing to sneeze at there and sometimes i get full of myself and i'm like yeah you just offer me a thousand dollars hey go away you know and then uh and then it evaporates and, and goes into a thousand dollar loss and then i begin to regret that here's another one tls john are you with me <laughs> And you can see those are your buys and sells there. So I ended up with 400 on this day. Uh, the range was a little small, but it did begin to expand on that. You stopped out of TLS. That's a bummer. And this was another one that kind of failed miserably at first, but luckily it did not go down and take out the low of the opening day. Again, not that you always want to give it all the way down to there, but in this particular case, I gave it a wide berth. And it was a fairly small position size. So 28 minus 23, 25 comes to 475, 200 shares and 950 on that. And then based on this market head earlier, had an open profits of 885 times 200 and 1770. Okay. Now, obviously not every position works like this. Sometimes they do get stopped out, obviously, but right now the markets are doing really well. And everybody in the group is doing really well too. Thank God. All right, last one, I swear. Uh, PTVE, we did talk about this one a lot in the group. I had a hard time buying it because they make plastic forks, but evidently plastic forks must be in demand now. I know I, I said this, but my wife tonight is ordering, uh, is ordering out and, uh, we have a, a drawer that we just throw the plastic forks and I opened it up the other day and it just popped out at me. In fact, we actually sat down and unwrapped them all and made like a little container and put them all. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, before I digress too far, but you know, it was a setup. It looked okay. And I said, what the heck? And I saw a couple of you guys buying into it too. So I said, well, let me give it a shot. So got in here, bought a hundred shares. And if you had good eyes, you could see that, well, technically it was a buy B here. But the range was kind of small, so I passed. The, I didn't like the the sector or the company, if you want to look at it like that, as far as what they did. The sector, I guess, is the correct word. They make forks, right? But it began to expand higher, and it was making new highs, and I figured it was worth a shot. It failed miserably for a while, and it had me pretty concerned. But then it began to get its act together. And by the way, this is a testament for following your plan, right? So if it comes all the way back down here, you stop out. But if it doesn't do anything, you just relax. I know, ha ha. 
anyway, we sold 500 there, or I, I sold 500 there. I guess we, because some of you guys played it too. Anyway, 1551 minus 1390 is 161 times 500. Eight hundred five dollars on that, and then I've got to stop right around there. In fact, I was actually put in a trailing stop today, intraday, to see if it would take me out of the of the stock, and it did not. And I might try get try that again tomorrow. If it doesn't take out that fifteen seventy five, I'll put in a trailing stop and see what happens. And if it takes off again, then I just leave the stop where it is. So if it does stop me out, I'll get two bucks on that times five hundred shares. That's a thousand bucks. Better than the poke in the eye. You do this across a few accounts, okay? It begins to add up. It's better than a poke in the eye. A couple of announcements real quick, and then we'll hop into live charts, and there's a couple of things I want to show you. And I do want to spend a little time going through a few IPOs just to see what's out there and show you some of the, the how ludicrous things are. Even ludicrous, again, would say this market is ludicrous. I would encourage you to join Dave Landry. Dane Landry's members, that's the gold membership at least. I do have this trading service too. The gold membership is only $47 a month and I promise you it is worth it. You can ask anybody here tonight that's in the Facebook group. We have a good bunch and we learn a lot from each other. I'm not the grand pumba. Every now and then I hold myself as out as that, but I get humbled enough to not hold myself out as that too much. But we got a really good bunch and I get a lot of good ideas and a lot of good trades off you guys. So I thank you for that. And seriously, I promise I'll make it worth your while if you do. The members area, there's a lot of great stuff back here. Members resources, you, for instance, you want that spreadsheet you saw earlier that's under members resources, which this is an old screenshot. This is members resources down here. And lots and lots and lots of benefits and features. I'm not gonna run through them all. I think one of the big things though is the member courses. And this is this has saved me, saved my carpal tunnel and my ulnar or whatever you call it, nerve quite a bit from answering questions because every question I've been asked the last 20 years, I think I've answered it within these courses and anything that hasn't been answered, we've lately been covering covering in the Facebook group. But I also have a Q&A session that we, we haven't done one in a while because all the answers are coming up in the Facebook group. Q&A is pretty much handled there now, but we do have a lot of good sessions on that too. All right, let's get to the live charts. I want to take a little, a quick look at the overall market. There's a couple of things I want to show you again with the how crazy this market is. And if you guys want to start asking about individual stocks, feel free to do so now. And we'll take a look at those. We should have plenty of time tonight to do that. Okay, the ALGM is one I wanted to show you earlier. So we've been in this one for quite a while. And it just kind of went flat on us, but it didn't do anything wrong. Okay. Now we had to stop right here, 2375. And you could see it's a long ways away from that now. Thank goodness. But today it ended up 187 and I bumped the stop, I think a buck on that. Okay. So what I'm doing is I'm not trailing it on a one from one basis. I'm allowing it to widen out. So by only going up a buck, we're like right here. This thing could actually come back into the base quite a bit, just in case it's like trying to fake everybody out. And I saw one of you guys talking about this earlier. I borrowed a couple of florisms from Linda Rasky, and she said she probably got them off the floor. Anyway, the market will do what it has to do to frustrate the most amount of people. The market will do the most obvious thing in the most unobvious manner is a corollary to that. And a lot of times what happens is you'll have like a TKO move in a, in a stock that's in a strong trend and it'll knock you out of the market right before it takes off. And this move like right here, even though we're sideways, it's the obvious thing would be to continue this uptrend, right? But what does it do first? It shakes out to the downside. By the way, I'm rereading Mark Douglas, the disciplined trader. And as I said before, he has some other books that are probably better written, but that was the first book I read on trading psychology at a time when I was really struggling. So it really struck a card with me. And let's face it, we were often struggling in this business. And it's I would encourage you to reread that. If you go to www.davelandry.com slash books dash two dash read, I'll put a link in here on the recording. And I think you'll get I'll get uh 10 cents or something if you buy it. I'll put it back into the website. <laughs> which is very expensive by the way. But anyway, it's all for you. 
anyway, he talks a lot about wrapping your head around the market, and it's good to read and reread this. And one thing that I, I talk about quite a bit is being cognizant of your own emotions, and that could be a microcosm of what's really out there. So the the fake out first in the market, like I talked about a little while ago. How do you feel doing that fake out? You know, and and there's a fine line between abandoning your system and giving it a little bit more giving it more room and then just completely abandoning your system. And then that time it really does take you out in, in like a major way. Okay. And by that, I mean like not honoring your stock. So anyway, I don't, you know, me, I'm off on a tangent as usual, but uh, I would encourage you to read it. And it's really been helping me again to kind of wrap my head around the market participants and what's happening. And one thing, and, and again, I know I'm off on a tangent here, but one thing, and I've done it lately, you know, it's like I had a, a, an options position today that had, uh, I, was, they were, I was getting a kind of a shitty mark on it and it was making my equity look bad in my portfolio. And I actually went in and did some, I actually went in and did some uh, raising of the bids on the options in attempt to get a better looking mark in my portfolio. And uh, because of the intrinsic, I raised the bid to just above the intrinsic because the option still has plenty of time in it. Anyway, long story endless, my fun and games could have pushed somebody to to do something. And I'm just a little, just a little old me out there trading. So think about the the other people out there the same way. Think about the collective of people when you think about the markets. And it's all psychology. It's all psychology. Okay. And you know, again, while I'm off in this tangent, one thing that 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 Douglas says, in order for a market to exist, you have to have two people who disagree on price. Okay. You, if you're buying a stock, think it's going higher, and the other person doesn't think it's going any higher, okay, or any other market for that matter. So just remember when you have an opinion, somebody else out there has an opposite opinion, otherwise they wouldn't be selling it to you, right? So again, it, it all comes out of psychology. All of my technical analysis, I don't use any mumbo jumbo or Fibonacci or wave count or anything like that. It's just all common sense, okay? This stock rallies up. Yeah, that's really good. Everybody's excited. This stock knocks out, okay? Knocks out a lot of people, begins to rally again. What happens then? Those who got knocked out are gonna have to put up or shut up, okay? So, it's really kind of interesting when you boil it all down, each little bar has a psychological meaning to it. Not everyone, but when you string them together and occasionally when you get like a pullback or even a one bar pattern, again, could be a one bar pattern like a TKO. There's a big psychology in that. Okay, let's do this just real quick. Let's take a look at some of these IPOs. Uh, before we do that, I wanna show you some of the lunacy out there. I wish I'd have saved it, but today's Landry list, had some stocks that were just up amazing like huge amounts and uavs was the biggest one there look at that 41 percent the landry list is oh i can't show you because <laughs> the recording people some people that are watching recording on in the service but the landry list is a list is my call list every day that i work off of in addition and within that landry list i should say or the official setups but this is a crazy ass market that we've been in. There, I said it. And it, if you take a look at this, at this one intraday, if you're trying to get like a day trade out of or something, look at that breakout late in the day. It just went straight up from there, 40%. So it's just it's just ludicrous. And again, I know I beat a dead horse, but even ludicrous would say it's ludicrous. So here's an IPO. Look at that. Bam, 58% in one day. That's a special purpose acquisition company, a SPOC. Now, somebody's probably going to join us in about two minutes and go, what's a SPOC? <laughs> well, if you don't know what a SPOC is by now, you shouldn't be trading. How's that? <laughs> now, this one obviously failed miserably. Let's just go through a few more of these. PLTR. Am I long this one? I forget. I think I got knocked out of this one. Is that one we just talked about? I don't remember. I have to check. But I know I was long for a while, and I may have gotten knocked out of that one. So let me just go through these and see if we could find something interesting. Now, here's IPOF, okay? Buy a B pattern, you would be buying above this high. It would have to close at 1350, round numbers, or above. 
So maybe take a look at I P O F. Can you pronounce I P O E? I P O E. I P O. Can you pronounce I P O E? Oh, this word here. I don't know. Hedo Hedio Sophia. Hedio Sophia. Social Capital Hedio Sophia Holdings Corporation. It's th these these things are stupid. Okay, these are stupid. Okay, but I'm not going to be one of those guys that sends out a newsletter every day and says. Bitcoin's stupid. Bitcoin's stupid. Bitcoin's stupid. You know, when it's when it's at ten thousand and it drops down to three uh, to whatever four or five thousand. See, I told you. And then it goes up to thirty-five thousand. Then you don't hear from these guys anymore. You know? Well, yeah, UAVs is stupid. They make unmanned aerial drones for agricultural business. I have no idea what that is. It sounds like the company on Seinfeld that did the opera broadcasting or whatever. But who cares, okay? As long as they're going up. Yeah, we're going to get burned on them, okay? But you can make a lot of money in the meantime. So 1350, somebody write that down. I, I'll write it down. The hell with it, you know? You guys haven't been writing them down for me. IPOF, 1350. I will buy this stock at 1350. Look at that. Like Tiny Elvis. IPOE. I don't, IPOE. What's, I don't, I, I don't get the joke. IPOE? <laughs> I'm missing the joke here, Craig. But look at this stupid thing. 61% uh, today. Another one of those Spocks. D, what's a Spock? I'm not telling you. <laughs> if you don't know what Spock is by now, again, you should be trading. This one's kind of cool. This was on the Landry list for quite a while. Nice little first deep retracement. Okay, it ran up and then retraced deeply. That's one of my IPO patterns. Nice little move higher today in that AI. DTRS, I am long this stock. I forget exactly where I got long. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five. It might have been on this day here because I know I'm not making a lot of money on it. And I hate to say it, but I'm going to say yet. But hey, I'm not dead yet. This one looks okay. It's a pullback. I was watching this one a few days ago. I think I played this little opening lap reversal on that one, if memory serves. Airbnb, okay, came in, came public, failed, shot up, and now it's pulling back again. I just don't see anything to get excited about with this one just yet. This one ran up, failed, made new lows. It's trying to crawl back up. I don't. I wouldn't do anything with that one either. Hey, look at this. Another one of those Spock things, okay? Now, a lot of these Spocks I've noticed tonight, they made these huge wide range bars on day one. I'm not sure exactly how to handle that, but in this particular case, the buy would be above this level here. I guess I'll know it when I see it, but that's IPOD. Beaky, we're not going to talk about that one because I got knocked out. Oh, what the hell? Maybe I need a lesson. You know, I can use a good ass kicking. So this one, I got long back here. And I forget why I got knocked out. I think I micromanaged myself out of it. You know, do as I say, not as I do. And I watched this thing. I was long this much lower than that, I thought. Anyway, I watched this thing take off without me. It was a bit of a bummer. That's probably a Spock, okay? But this is this is such a wide range bar. Even Big Dave couldn't buy way up here. So I think I'd let that one go. NGA is one I missed. I think it was on my Landry list at some point in time. I think some of you guys got it. Congratulations. I don't know why I didn't take it back here. I don't know if I didn't think the pullback was deep enough or whatever, but hey, that's looking pretty good. Let's preserve our mental health here. I-P-O-E. You totally lost me. Maybe I'll get it tomorrow. <laughs> Dash, okay. So, you know, I, I was, I've been in a presentation recently. I said, what a turd this one has been. This is why we don't buy them straight out the gate. Now, I know one of you guys in here, John Z, I think, you do, you do look at them when they're down low like this and look for a pop, a bounce off the lows. But I guess that's just a day trade, okay? But it's not my thing. And I got to be careful not to get sucked into too many other people's methodologies like I did a while back, truth be told. Now, this one's a bit of a bummer for me because we did play it back here. If you go and look at those archives I spoke of a few minutes ago, you'll see we did get in it back here, but we got knocked out somewhere along the way. And that's a bit of a bummer. It's a shame we couldn't, we didn't have a bit of a wider stop on that one. And it is what it is. Did anybody hold on past the, the stop out or whatever? This one's kind of confusing. It's kind of all over the place. The range really isn't that big, so but it is a Spock, so we'll have to maybe just watch that one, but I don't really see any reason to go after that one. 
This is probably another Spock. It's not set up at the present. This thing's kind of died out in here. So I would wait for it to close at a new high. So what you might want to do in a case like this, so you don't have to watch it every day, is set an alert. Let's just do that. Set alert for 2050 to wake me up. Price alerts. Is there any personal information in here? I hope not. Anyway, I have to do one later. I don't know how to, I forget how to do them quickly in uh, telechart. Let me make a note of that, YSG. You guys never take any notes when I do this, and I've got to go in and rewatch this and figure that out. I don't see anything. This is no longer set up, but it, this was a nice little pullback, taking off out the pullback, and it's probably a Spock, if I had to guess. Nothing to do there, down towards new lows. There's no setup here. This is kind of wide and loose. I was wide and loose. It's nothing to do there. This one's kind of died out forever. You know, let it let it die out and let's see if it makes a bow tie or something. And then we might take a look at that one if it does. This was on my trading service a while back. I had an entry, a liberal entry way up here, okay, because I wanted to avoid being triggered or noise alone. I know some of you guys front ran the setup. I don't know how you're doing with that now, if you're still in it or not. But that's why I had a liberal entry in case you were wondering. That doesn't always work. Sometimes it goes with that liberal entry and then reverses, kind of adding insult to entry. But anyway, it didn't trigger, so I took it off uh, the list. And again, go in and look at the archives if, you, if you're if you not in a service or if you're on a service too and see these. This is some kind of Spock. Eh, I don't know. It's, it's a little bit on the thinner side for a Spock. So I probably would leave that one alone unless the volume picked up quite a bit. Now this one I am long. And I'm trying to think when I got long this particular one. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five. I don't know if this trading counts back here. So one, two, three, four, five. I think I got long on this day here, okay? INAQ. And on any of these, keep me honest, just remind me of them uh, in the future. Remind me of them on Facebook and I'll get the, uh, I'll pull up the portfolio and see what I got in. But yeah, this one, uh, you know, what I would do is if you have kids or grandkids and they have college funds that you put money in, you know, what's what's the chance of those kids, you know, graduating in, um, you know, what is it, uh, lesbian dance theory or something? And, and what's the chance of them getting a job in that? So just, you know, <laughs> it's somebody else's joke and I, I'm sure I ruined it and offended a lot of people. Nothing wrong with that, okay? Now that there's anything wrong with that, like they said on the Seinfeld episode. But anyway, raid their college funds and put all that money into this stock. And somebody's going to take me out of context. And I'm going to get in so much trouble. <laughs> you said to write down 14. Thank you, George. Finally, somebody paid attention. He said, write down 14 on I and AQ. And that's, I guess that's where I'm long from. If I said 14, okay. Maybe I should edit out some of that stuff. <laughs> this looks kind of interesting. It's got decent volume, a little bit of a TKO back here. I'd like to see a deeper pullback on that instead, though, or or instead of that. So, um, you know, oh, by the way, I was joking on that take all your money and, and, and put into that one stock just because I was long. So that it was a joke. VGAC, I'm long this one too. I got long on that pullback, and it's a pullback of the pullback, but I am long. Oh, this is in the service, by the way, too. So I have to be long that one. CRSR, I got knocked out of this one, did not get back in. And there's nothing to do there now. Wide and loose and sideways. Hey, this is probably another Spock. Let's give it a few more days and see what happens. Day five, right? This one, uh, we talked about a little while ago. This is the bank I got in, got in here. And so far, knock on wood, it's way up here. I never thought a bank would do that well. I never thought a plastic fork company would do that well. So let's just get through a few more of these, and then we'll start looking at your stock picks. So this is only two days in. So we'll wait, we'll wait to what, three more days? Maybe the close three days from now. We might be getting in this one. We'll see. We'll have to see. Maybe if it picks up some range, the volume stays good. Hey, what is this? This is Spock. These Spocks are stupid. They're all going to go to zero. Well, who cares? As long as they go up first. All right. So that's enough of the IPOs for now. You kind of get the, the idea. We're looking to buy the new closing highs, and then we're looking for secondary setups down the road. And after they've been public for a while, we look for core trading patterns. So McAvee, I see no reason to go after this one. 
unless, and I'm going to write this down because you guys hadn't been writing it down for me, unless it goes above and closes above 1950. Remember the buy at B, the idea is to try to get in as early as possible, okay? Day five will be the earliest, close of day five, it comes public on a Monday. What's the rule? The earliest we will get long is on Friday afternoon if it closes at a new closing high. Now, obviously, you don't know close until after the fact. But if it's pretty close to that close, to closing at a new high or or above where that closing high would be for the all-time high for the first week, then by all means, go ahead and take the setup. But there's nothing to do with this particular stock. But hey, it's got good volume. So it's very tradable. So any close above 1950, I would personally go along this stock. Now here's another one, take all your money and put into uh, this stock. Go ahead and pawn your wife's jewelry, uh, do whatever. <laughs> anyway, uh, ALGM, break it out to brand new highs. That's in the trading service too, by the way. And we talked about that one earlier. I had a nice little, this is the first little pullback or first deep retracement, whatever you wanna call that back here. And this turned into a really nice little stock. Anyway, so you got you guys get the idea on these IPOs. One of my favorite things now, it's been one of my favorite things since well before 2014 when I did the IPO course. All right, so let's take a look at uh, some of these. Oh, before we look at the individual stocks, let's get through the market real quick. And, you know, I was doing a trading service tonight and Tiny Elvis came out a lot, so Tiny Elvis will probably come out a lot tonight. Okay, S&P 500. Winning, you should be able to draw a big blue arrow on that, huh? Now, I wasn't really crazy that it was just kind of bumping along in here, so I am excited to see it accelerating a little bit higher. Let's let's start kissing each other just yet. Maybe if it could continue to accelerate higher, I'd get really, really excited. But hey, as a trend guy, I'm not going to argue with the market as long as it's making new highs, especially on a little bit of vigor. Percent and a half today, all-time highs, I'll take it. Take a look at the NASDAQ, or as we used to call it, NASQAQ. Up over two and a half percent. Obviously, nice longer-term trend there looking pretty good a little bit of a tko ish move here that tko would be triggering today in fact closing at new highs again two and a half percent higher take a look at the rusty the rusty's been on fire rusty's the strongest one of them all that would explain why we've been doing so well trading these smaller cap issues less any less efficient issues as a general statement well, take a look at the Rusty. That's why. Russell 2000 doing really well in here. Oh, we had all-time highs in a Rusty. Oh, yeah. We're well into all-time highs. It took forever to get there, but we're there now. Looking pretty good. Energies. I've been a bull on energies for a while. We're in that uh, CPE, which is up 100%. Sorry about that, John. So energies closing not at all-time highs, I don't think but still doing well nonetheless in the energy so far so good metals and mining look at that now metals and mining have done really well pretty much without gold and silver so if gold and silver get off their ass metals and mining is going to do really 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 well i'm often asked about passive invest investments i have a small account and i guess it's not too too small it's better than the poking the eye and it's it's kind of tied up long it's kind of a long story but it's kind of tied up to where I, I tried to move it around they won't let me move it around because they were kind of jerks about it so i looked through their list of available funds and i picked the metal fund out back when back here when metals were doing pretty good and so far i've been pretty amazed with the results on that so i'm waiting for gold and silver to kick it into gear i am a bit of a gold bug silver bug and I have to watch that because right now, gold and silver, not so hot. Silver's looking a little better, though. But gold's got a lot of overhead supply to gold stocks. Gold, the commodity, tried to push into that overhead supply, pull them back a little bit. Shorter term, it's okay. Longer term, looks like it's got some trouble ahead of it. Silver looking a little bit better, though. It's plowed through most of its overhead supply. It looks like it wants to go up to make new highs. I wouldn't rush out and buy silver at the moment. 
But if it does break out the new highs on pullbacks, it might be worth a shot. Silver stocks looking a little bit better, but nothing to get too excited about there right now. There's so many great looking stocks out there. Now, the thing is, and sometimes, you know, being super duper selective can hurt you. This is GATO, which we did talk about in the group. And let me know if anybody here tonight took this trade. But this was a nice buy at B, and if you missed the first buy at B, it did, you know, the next day was fantastic. I just couldn't wrap my head about around buying a silver stock when silver, especially back here, was a little bit more lackluster. No pun intended. Durables, Sleepy O Consumer Durables, breaking out to all-time highs. Speaking of Sleepy O, take a look at banks, okay? Banks are starting to act like biotechs, right? It's crazy. Drugs, look at that, bam, winning up one and a third percent. Been kind of all over the place for a while here, getting new act together, breaking out to brand new highs. Biotechnology up two and three quarters percent today, banged out all time highs, recently pulled, broke out. He tried to say pull back and then taken off again, looking pretty good. Health services, bam, winning all time highs. Manufacturing brand new highs with. Vigor. By the way, earlier I said lesbian dance theory. Uh, you know, if you're studying that, that's great. Kudos to you. It's just you're probably not going to find a good, a good paying job doing that. You'd be much better off. All kidding aside, uh, learning how to be an automatic transmission mechanic, which you can make about 150 grand a year doing, and that would be, that would be a good career. Instead, so maybe something, uh, one of these dying. You know, nobody can fix anything anymore. So maybe find one of those careers if you want to go into it but uh i digress we should probably should go off on that tangent hey take a look at the simis uh, look at that trend it's huge it's tiny elvis now this is what's called an accelerating trend i just got an email from uh my friend in germany he wants me to update he's been updating the articles for traders magazines that i did a few years back with a lot of patterns and a lot of things that i do and we're we've now reached we went through bow ties and first thrusts and all these things and now we've reached accelerating momentum strategy and boy now this market and, and basically he asked me for a new example or two and, and to freshen up the article a bit but now is probably one of the best times ever i'll probably do that tomorrow and uh i, I think they're still doing an english version too so uh, i'll see if we could figure out maybe we can get you guys a copy of that but anyway the point i'm trying to make is semiconductors are accelerating the new highs and that's a wonderful thing and if this actually keeps up we should continue to see a plethora of, of new setups. There's just so many setups out there right now. So obviously things are doing pretty good. You could hear it in my voice, okay? And I don't want to get too full of myself. Last time I did that and got in a lot of trouble. I'm just thanking God every day for and the market gods for what's going on. Somebody mentioned bonds as a possible bottom. No, uh, it's it's been a really, 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 really choppy downtrend, and now they're breaking down the new lows, okay? Bonds down, rates up. You know, I've got uh, my wife is not in the mortgage industry per se, but she does a lot of interaction with people in the mortgage, mortgage industry, and they're often, call, they're often calling on me and saying, what's, what's going on with interest rates? Well, my answer to them is they look like they're headed higher. Let's throw some moving averages in here for S&Gs. You know, that that 30 day EMA, I've been falling in love with that for quite a while. And even though this is a choppy trend, look at how it just pretty much it barely gets above that 30. It's kind of hugged the 30 all the way down. So I wouldn't rush out in short bonds. I don't think there's a setup there. There's too many other good things out there to buy versus short something. But as you can see, downtrend, choppy downtrend remains intact. I'm long the euro. I've been long the euro forever. I have a small Forex account. I bought the Euro a while back and I've forgotten about it. And then <laughs> truth be told, I had, a, I had a big fat trailing stop in it. And uh, I heard, like, what's that noise? What's that noise? And then I realized it was my trailing stop. I've been in the Euro since November, I think. Anyway, you can see dollar down, Euro up and other currencies up. So dollar's not the place to be right now. But hey, you know what it is? Bitcoin. <laughs> In fact, let me see if I could just, uh, let me get this up in the background. And I wanna show uh, Bitcoin real quick. Let me just show you real quick and then we'll, we'll come in and get your stock picks, I swear. So if we take a look at the ACP platform with stock charts and we take a look at my 
cryptocurrency list. So what did I just say? Dollar down, okay? Dollar down, Bitcoin up. Look at that. 30, oh, wow, $40,000. <laughs> Tiny Elvis, right? Look at that. Look at that trend. It's huge. If you guys remember and hold me to it, okay, I don't want to brag about something that's not true. But I seem to remember pointing out this TKO down to the 30 EMA. That's a great setup. You've got Landry Light here, okay, this nice green Landry Light down here. I've got plenty of presentations on this. No need to reinvent the wheel tonight. Go in and watch them. TKO, okay, entry above the high, stop below the low. Broadcast that up for your partial profits and just hang on. Okay, and uh, Ethereum. I am long Ethereum too. Ethereum has begun to take off nicely today, notwithstanding. I have a order to sell half my Ethereum, but I keep I keep bumping that stop up as opposed to just taking the profits like I talk about doing with the trading service. This is open 24 hours, so I can run an order. I just keep bumping that that uh, stop up. Anyway, that's Ethereum. Obviously, looking pretty darn good. Let's uh, switch back. Any questions while we're on the cryptos? Any questions on the cryptos really quick, and then I'll pop back to the, we'll start taking your, uh, I'll answer your questions, comments. All right, let's do that then. Craig Watson, the Warren Buffett, the Warren, oh, Warren Zevon trade. I thought it was Warren Buffett. Yeah, lawyers, guns, and money. Bring lawyers, guns, and money. I remember that song, showing my age. <laughs> Except the money is crypto. I got you. All right, yeah. Lawyers, guns, and money. Weed, mon weed, guns, and money. That'll work, I guess. The PM show is different than is different after an IPA than the coffee and the AM. Oh, you're taunting me, Craig. I had a coffee stout the other day. It was really good. I might have been overserved the night before. We'll have to get some of that bark and squirrel coffee. And figure out how to make a coffee stout. I don't have my brewery anymore though, but I'll have to get some of that bark and squirrel coffee. Hint, hint. Okay, Beaky. Okay, what do, what do you guys want to talk about as far as setups? <laughs> Sorry about the salt in the wounds on the CPU, John. But yeah, you got a, you got enough stocks working. Okay, Fubu. Too far of a pullback, probably, because we had this one in the Landry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's way too far. We had this one in the Landry list for a while. It was too wild and crazy to put on as official setup. But yeah, I think even though it had some gaps in here, it just was, I thought it was okay because it skyrocketed up so much. But yeah, it's it's it looks like it's in trouble. There's a couple stocks that look like they're in trouble like this. I wouldn't short them though. I mean, it'd be very dangerous and I'm not shorting anything at the moment other than the S&P futures here and there. I'll, you know, one thing I've been working on, we talked about in a group and it, it, it can be dangerous. But I've been working on doing a little plunge protection when the when the S and P starts coming unglued a little bit, and just knowing that I've got so many stocks on, I've been shorting the futures. But believe me, I'm not fighting this thing. Okay, in fact, I'm trying to go long as much as possible. Tangent on Garth, All right, you lost me. Can you explain that? Let's preserve our mental health here. You said write down 14 on INQ. Yeah, we did. Okay, VRM IPO trend change. VRM. Um, yeah, it's not bad. Um, who said? Who brought that up? Geo. My only problem with this one, I, I, I do kind of like it, but my only problem is you got a mound. Remember what was the tangent I went off earlier? My point was to point out that my technical analysis, at least the when I say my technical analysis, the way I view technical analysis, not mine, but my methodology, it looks at the charts to read the psychology of the market, okay? And, and my definition of technical analysis is using the charts to read the psychology of the market while at the same time embracing your own or to read the emotions of the market is more correct at the same time embracing your own because we can't control our emotions, but you can embrace them. And I've done this before, and I've been thinking lately I want to do it again after reading some Douglas, as I have been lately. God rest his soul. Good guy. Nice guy. Is uh, do you feel like I do? The old uh, show him age again, the old Peter Frampton. 
And, you know, when I'm sitting here and I get really emotional and I'm dropping F-bombs or I get excited about a trade, and I try not to get too excited about a trade. It's, it's funny. And there's a neurology involved in this too, but a maturity helps a little bit. Now, my wife may argue with that because age does not guarantee maturity in my case. And that's fine. I don't care. I don't want to grow up. <laughs> but embracing how you feel about a stock, your emotions while you're in a trade or any other market for that matter, I just realize there's a lot of other people with those emotions. So if you could recognize and embrace your emotions and do what needs to be done, then you'll do just fine. And, you know, you figure all that out, write me a letter. But in a case like this, let's read the emotions again. Lots and lots and lots of overhead supply. So Geo, if, if you mentioned this, it looks fantastic on the right side of the chart, okay? But it does have some issues on the left side of the chart. By the way, find a broker that'll let you trade off the left side of the chart, let me know. So yeah, that was a bow tie. It's just a great looking setup, Geo. That's fantastic. Good eye on that, fantastic. I mean, it's perfect, okay? It's persistent, it's perfect, it's coming off the of lows. It just has all this darn overhead supply. See, I told you your stock picking would get better. Oh, that's Chris. Okay, sorry about that, Geo. <laughs> but yeah, you know, I like what you I like I like the way you think because if a, an IPO, let's say an IPO comes public and goes down forever and then bottoms out for a while, there's a phoenix characteristic in these things. My bad. Lesson learned. Never write off a sector because just because it's beating you up in the past. Yeah, you know, every now and then you're kind of like, ah, I can't get excited about the energies or I can't get excited about this area or whatever. But if they're going up and it's like that same thing happened to me with the bank. And, you know, it's really hard for me to trade bank. Uh, REITs is another example. I, I can't remember the last REIT I traded. I think the last one I traded, I lost money. And I'm like, ah, see, I told you. But you don't it sometimes it's 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 hard and like banks it's hard to get excited about but you know this is an ipo this ebc i'm talking about and banks are doing pretty good in here you know i'm just going to close my eyes and buy okay plastic forks it's kind of hard to get excited about a consumer non durable like that if that's what that is but the pattern was there you know and, and as a technician sometimes you've got to say i can't do that okay <laughs> quote i don't want to grow up dave landry wow now i know i'm in the right place yeah adulting as the kids call it nowadays is not much fun it's fun to see it's fun to see these kids adult though <laughs> yeah this looks good who brought that up chris cj yeah looking pretty good uh yeah you know wide and loose space in here but that's okay i'm guessing it's a metal because it says metals but yeah, that looks really good. Needs a little bit more pullback, okay? Little bit more pullback, not too much though. Maybe about to 11 or so. But yeah, that's a good looking stock. I do like that one. I tend to be slightly more, oh, look at those funny looking charts. What's that? Ooh, y'all see that? It's it, That's funny looking. I wonder what that is. Oh, I'm gonna have to play with that tomorrow. That's crazy. Y'all see that? Y'all see, how did I do that? I fat figured something. Look at that, look at those crazy charts. Wow. I feel like Tony Ellis looking at those crazy charts. What what is that? Okay, D O M O. I'm gonna somebody's gonna write me, write me a, like a six page email tomorrow. Dave, those are candle charts. I think it's baby diaper charts. <laughs> yeah, it's like three babies in a pooper da poopy diaper sitting on a fence, or three birds crapping on a wire. Yeah, this looks pretty good. This this move here looks a little extreme. HV, a little on the high side, not too bad. It's got plenty of volume. I, I'm going to give that one a, a pretty darn good. Um, I would prefer, not that I wouldn't trade a stock that looks like this. At this juncture, I still would prefer something that has a little bit further to go, maybe not quite at new highs just yet. Remember how we were trading Chewy? Let's see what Chewy's doing now. Unfortunately, we got knocked out. Oh, Chewy looks good. Unfortunately, we got knocked out of it way back here. But I'd rather trade Chewy way back here when it's first taken off as opposed to now. Not that you can't make a little money in that, you know, and, and maybe, you know, given this virus, again, God forbid or whatever, Chewy's going to still be a big deal because people don't want to go out to get their dog food or they're under quarantine, I guess. Uh, but anyway, I'd like to catch something like this a little earlier in the process, but there's nothing wrong with the stock, okay? If you went out and traded this, Maybe entry at 65, stop maybe at uh, way down here, probably be like 52 or something. 
and you got stopped out and you told me, hey, Dave, what did I do wrong? I'd say absolutely nothing. So George, that looks good. Oh, I just deleted George's, I'm sorry. Um, Stuart, that looks good. George, can you retype your symbol? symbol? I'm sorry, Got a little ahead of myself. Baby diver charts. <laughs> GMDA long, Mike, Mike. GMDA. Yeah, um, a lot of days in the pullback. And then here's the thing, you just get this one day for your massive breakout in the trend. I prefer when you have a few more days in the breakouts or in the trend, I should say, a lot of times when you get this one big up move, it kind of becomes a bottle rocket. It takes off and comes right back in. Peter Brandt calls those popcorns because it's like a popcorn. When you pop a popcorn, it flies up, it hits the lid and comes goes right back down. So um, GM, do I have the right stock? GMDA long. That was overhead of the 16. I don't know what you're talking about. Let's see. Oh, way back there. Yeah, this is a long time ago, but still that would be a concern because markets have long memories. I'd be more concerned with A, the number of days of the pullback, or I should say A, the one bar breakout, B, the number of days of the pullback. And in order of concern, number three would be this overhead supply. So yeah, Mike, that's too much good stuff out there. You know, and you know it, and you're in a lot of those stocks already, so you don't have to go after that. Oh, I see, I hear what you're saying. He said the volume was super low way back here. And, you know, maybe that's something to 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 look into, okay? Um, it would be hard for me to do it on the fly, and, and I'm not into volume that much. I live in enough to trade a stock, but I hear you. And, you know, maybe we've backed into something by accident. Maybe you could do a volume by price and just see how much volume is actually back here. You know, that's that, I just learned something here, maybe. May, you know, I don't know. Somebody write that down, please. If you're worried about overhead supply, do volume by price and see how much volume is actually at that price. But let me give you a little hint right now, okay? If you could find something that does this, okay? It goes up 40% in one day, uh, MVIS. Oh, that one's, that was up uh, 13%. I did day trade this one today, uh, FYI. Then you don't have to justify how much volume is, is overhead and all this other stuff. There's just so many great looking stocks out there right now. There's no need to, to justify. Now, longer term, when it's not too many setups, that might be some fodder for research. EGHT, would you have played this as a TKO? No. Okay. Remember what I said a few seconds ago to Mike about it's got this one big breakout bar. And then it's done that. So it went up, it did that. It's just the opposite, accelerating minimum, momentum. Well, I guess you could argue that in this case, it did accelerate higher, but not really because it went straight up and then it kind of did this, okay? As opposed to, this is what you want to see, something that good, okay, Tarzan speak, this kind of bad, all right? Now that's not the best example of that unless we're just looking at the one bar breakout. So look at the breakout is straight up and then not as impressive since. So I would pass on that one, okay? Chris A wants to look at NGM. Yeah, this one looks really good. I don't remember if this is in the Landry list or not, but I saw it in my analysis. I know it's at kind of high levels here, but I think it's got a ways to go. It's a little bit on the thin side. If it's not in the Landry list, I don't know why I didn't put it in, but this is in my momentum list in here. Nice persistent uptrend, nice uh, pullback. So, Chris, you're going to get a high five on that one. And, you know, there was a couple of other ones that went high for it. So, so okay, John says NGM is in the Landry list. Okay. Well, the recording of this won't go live until later tomorrow. So, if you guys want to front run those guys, feel free. <laughs> I'm half kidding. Well, you guys need some kind of reward for showing up live, right? Okay, that's all I have for tonight. Any more questions? Any more stocks? I'll hang around another minute if anybody wants to ask about anything else. While we're in pass, I want to thank everybody for coming. I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule. Sorry that I went on some rants, but I've been told before, Dave, the only time I learned something from you is when you go on a rant. So that, that kind of jinx me. <laughs> my, my, my ADHD, you know, kicks in and I'm like, ah, I got to pull it all back together. What was I talking about? All right, everybody have a fantastic night. If we don't talk between now and then, which I'm sure we will, 
in the group, uh, Facebook group. Uh, everybody have a great weekend. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome, George. George says, great teachers, Dave. Thank you, George. All right, see you guys in the group. Thank you, David.